Hey there, Pinball Stoppers. In this video, I wanna go through how we can handle one of the most bothersome and common side effects with isotretinoin, also known as Accutane, and that is dryness. For those who are new to the channel, I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board certified dermatologist and acne expert. Almost everyone who's taking isotretinoin will have some kind of dryness. Dry lips is the most common, but we can also see other forms of mucocutaneous dryness that's dryness at our mucous membranes where our skin kind of meets the inside of our body. So lip dryness, nose dryness, eye dryness, and also even genital dryness can occur. Patients who are taking isotretinoin can also have what we call retinoid dermatitis, this kind of eczema-like dryness that commonly happens on the back of the hands or the arms. So what can we do to both try to prevent and address this dryness when it occurs? Well, when it comes to prevention, one of the most helpful tools we have are omega-3s. There are several randomized controlled trials that show that taking about a gram a day of omega-3, and so this isn't fish oil, this is an omega-3 supplement. Fish oil is only about 30% omega-3, so this is a gram a day of actual omega-3. And what those studies found is that it reduced the amount of this mucocutaneous dryness by about half. So that's a very simple thing that we can do for anyone on isotretinoin to try to prevent this dryness from occurring. In addition, just using lots of moisturizer, good dry skin care is important here. So just like how we tell our patients with eczema to try to avoid a lot of harsh soaps, a lot of hot water, a lot of lip licking, things like that, these are gonna be helpful here. And then using moisturizers, emollients, often Vaseline Aquaphor is great for the lips. Other moisturizers like CeraVe, Eucerin, Cetaphil, whatever your favorite moisturizer in, right after bathing or after hand washing can be good for other areas on the body. And so these are really our foundational prevention strategies. Now, the last prevention strategy we have is just using lower dose isotretinone regimens. Dryness associated with isotretinone is very dose dependent. And what I mean by that is the higher dose of medicine we use, the more dryness occurs. So for those who are having challenges with dryness or would like to try to have less dryness during their course of treatment, using a lower dose regimen can be very helpful here. Now, of course, the trade-off is the lower dose we use often the longer it takes for acne to clear. And so that's what we're often balancing when we're using isotretin, when we're using Accutane, is balancing that risk of dryness with higher doses versus that um, desire to get quickly, better quickly. And so we have to try and balance those two things. Now, what can we do once dryness occurs? How can we help to treat it even if we take these preventative measures and these issues still arise? Well, for lip dryness, we can use hydrocortisone containing ointments or lip balms. So for instance, Dr. Dan's has a hydrocortisone containing lip balm that can be helpful. Also using like prescription 2.5% hydrocortisone ointment or other strategies like this can be helpful. Now with any topical steroid, we wanna be thoughtful about overuse. So we wanna to try to limit our use of topical steroids to about two or three weeks per month not more than that, to avoid thinning the skin or other side effects from topical steroids. Similarly, for retinoid dermatitis on the arms or other parts of the body, we can use topical steroid medicines like trimcinolone, we could use over-the-counter hydrocortisone, we can do these same kind of anti-inflammatory topical medicines to help that skin barrier heal. For nose dryness, it's a little bit harder to use moisturizers. Of course, we could try to do a little bit of some hydrocortisone ointment or some Vaseline, but that's not always the most comfortable thing in the nose. There are these nasal saline mist sprays that can be helpful for hydrating the skin of the nose to help with nose dryness or nose bleeds. So that's one strategy that we can use. I also personally think that using a water-based surgical lubricant can be another helpful strategy here. These are made for use on mucous membrane surfaces, and so they're often a little bit more comfortable to use on an area of the nose than something like Vaseline or Aquifer, other moisturizers that are more designed for our skin. So using nasal saline mist and sometimes like a water-based surgical lubricant like Surgery Lube can be helpful ways to hydrate and to help protect the skin barrier in the nose to help with nasal dryness and nose leads. Now moving on to eye dryness, here's where eye drops, you can use you know, any high quality brand like Refresh or Sustain can be helpful for when it comes to managing eye dryness. And again, omega-3 I think is really critical here. There's a clinical trial that looked at this intervention called puncto plugs where you block up the tear duct to try and keep more tear fluid in the eye and omega-3s for eye dryness and for uh, other side effects to the eye associated with isotretinoin. And what they found is the puncto plugs didn't help that much for helping to protect the meibomian glands or other dry, dryness symptoms, but 
using omega-3 is really did make a difference. And so again, I think omega-3 can be a very valuable tool here, especially because long-term eye dryness is something that I worry about with isotretinoin with Accutane. And so if we can protect the oil glands of our eye, these meibomian glands from damage that we don't want, right? We wanna get rid of the oil glands in our face so we can help treat the acne, but we don't wanna get rid of the oil glands in our eye. We need those to help keep our eye lubricated. Omega-3s seem to be helpful and protective there. So again, it's another reason why I think omega-3s are such an important aspect of taking care of someone on isotretinoin to help with both just general dryness, but also in particular with eye dryness. So those are some of our foundational tools that we can use to try to help address and prevent dryness from isotretinoin. When it comes to prevention, again, the key things here, omega-3s, a gram a day, are very valuable for reducing mucocutaneous dryness and eye dryness as well. Using good moisturizer use, our general dry skin recommendations can be helpful as well. And then if dryness arises for lip dryness, using good emollients like Vaseline, Aquaphor, maybe some hydrocortisone containing lip balms or ointments can be helpful. For nasal dryness, using nasal saline mist or also using potentially a water-based surgical lubricant. And then for eye dryness, using eye drops like Refresh or Sustain can all be helpful strategies. And then for retinoid dermatitis in the body, using something like a mild to moderate potency topical steroid like Triamcinolone or even over-the-counter hydrocortisone can be helpful here. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please pop that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Your support means a lot to me. In addition, ask me your questions about acne and tell me about your experiences with managing dryness from isotretinoin in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.